Just fucking do it. Subscribe now. I'm going to pass this around, but this is last night at 10 o'clock or 11 o'clock, the traffic going from uh, Beverly Hills to like uh, Newport Beach. Mm. And if you can see, it's bumper to bumper. Wow. Holy bumper that, to, that's special. Huh? Yeah. I, I, that's the 405? That's every day. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, four or five. Four or five. Yeah. And uh, I don't know, 15 years ago, uh, uh, whoever um, is in charge of traffic for the United States and uh, transportation, whatever, they did a study and they said that the average speed in Los Angeles was, it was either 11.3 miles an hour or 13.1 miles an hour. That's about right. Average. And um, to get from like Beverly Hills to uh, downtown Los Angeles, which I think is maybe six miles, five miles in distance, can take you two and a half hours. Um, yeah. And there's other places that I have bad traffic. You know, when, when we were in Manila, Manila's got horrific traffic. Um, and there, um, and obviously India, not obviously, but India has got her, you know, horrific traffic. And the, uh, but there are. And, uh, but um, L.A. has been one of the pre-eminent bad traffic places for, I mean, 50 years or, and before they did the smog uh, uh, emissions and all that stuff, in the 50s, uh, you could you literally cut the, the uh, air, the smog, as it was called, uh, with a chainsaw. And uh, they've shown some days in India in the last few weeks, um, and China, uh, where they've uh, actually, sh China actually shut down production for its factories, which they rarely do, because the the, um, the smog was so bad, and um, the um, but I remember in grammar school, um, the we weren't wearing masks, but uh, in grammar school, um, I used to you know uh, uh, make your eyes water and stuff like that. You know that was sixty years ago for me, and um, but people that are from like Kansas or someplace, uh, or from Forfar. Uh, they think there's traffic here in Forfar, which is a joke. I mean, uh, they've got two, three signals in Forfar, and the most that you're ever behind is maybe four cars at a signal. And it's not, you know, stacked up or anything. And, um, but there's people uh, that um, go to the big city and can't, can't drive because of the uh, commotion. Now, if you raise in New York City, or some place like that. I mean, it's just, it's no big deal. I mean, there's uh, congestion in foot traffic, let alone car traffic. Yeah. And, uh, but I mean, it's what you're exposed to. It's not what happens to us, remember. It's how we react to what happens to us. And um, in theory, people that come from cause, uh, big metropolitan areas can supposedly deal with you know, uh, adversities uh, better because some, something could happen any day or three times a day. You know, you walk to your office 20 blocks. When I used to live there, I used to live on 27th and Lexington in a uh, building they used to call the bed bug. I've said this before. And uh, because uh, cockroaches were this fucking big, you know. And the um, now 27th and Lexington has got some new building there. Yeah, yeah. But when I was there, you could go around the corner to the local bar and uh, local bars were, uh, I'm sure, are still prominent for neighborhood bars. And you could buy a steak sandwich, uh, French fries, uh, and a, uh, a couple of beers for $6.50. That was 1972. Uh, I'm sure the beer costs more than six fifty now. Yeah, yeah. And um, the... Um, but some of you are from those kind of areas, and some of you are like from the outback, where there's nobody or nothing. Um, but no matter where you are, this works. This, this QLA works. Um, and I was looking at the emails from the, um, the QLA wannabes. Um, and uh, again, I told you like yesterday, I love when they get on each other's case and they start saying how stupid the other one is. And, don't you pay attention, and Penny must be right, you're all meatheads, and I love hearing that back and forth, <laughs> that banter, but um, until you're exposed to that, most of the people you've dealt with in your life are meatheads.
I mean, they just are. When you, you know, when you think about it, uh, now you don't even have to think about it. They, they are meatheads, starting from our family and uh, the best intention uh, that um, most parents have for you um, because they're not programmed, you know, like the Williams sisters and Tiger Woods and a few others. Um, and because they have no benchmark for high performance, uh, they turn out you. And uh, occasionally, uh, some of you rise to the top uh, and, um, and get a lot of stuff done. And again, money's not everything, but it's the only thing anybody keeps track of. Um, and uh, you, you remember from the, the, the regular seminar, all the things that money is, dirty, bad, 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 and, uh, and it's the root of all evil. Um, I, the lack of money is the root of all, of all misery. The lack of money is the root of all misery, you know. And if I was going to write the Bible or the Koran, I'd write it from a different perspective. Um, the, um, any questions? How many of you now have not given at least one individual thing up here? How many left? Okay. How many still have uh, a case that they haven't presented that they, they brought? Okay, okay. We're going to go through those, and then, um, depending what time it is, uh, we're going to focus in on the uh, big cases uh, that um, everybody's uh, gotten. And a couple of you, you're working on the same case, and you'll be maybe not surprised um, how different you can look at it. And the important thing is, uh, as I said uh, last night when we were closing, some of you may not choose to use all this stuff. Um, but when you look at these deals now going forward, you have to, well, I say you have to, you should look at them with a different set of glasses now, a different perspective, because you're framing the information differently. And most of the information that you looked at before, um, you don't need. That information that you ask questions about, at the very Lee, worst case is during the due diligence, your accountants and your lawyers are asking some of those questions. You know, about uh, is the property, you know, really, uh, um, can the lease be extended? That's one that um, uh, gets a lot of kids in trouble. And when the person that owns the lease, uh, that's when they know they have the most leverage to stick you up because all of a sudden they want a lot more or to extend it another three years or five years, they want a whole bunch of money. Now, one of the mentees who uh, came to the, um, I believe the second um, hardcore sent me an email last night and the sign on the building now that he's in is his company's name. So they were putting the sign up, they were lifting the sign, whoever he puts these big signs on the buildings and he sent it to me. And, uh, and he was a, a long time coming to that. But, um, the, um, and so, you know, I was proud of him, the, uh, I'm sure. And if we had taken a little less than 3,000 more square feet, that big building on 1111 Bagney would have been the Great Western Building. Because we took 48,600 square feet. And if we had taken over 50 or over 51, we would have, it would have been the Great Western Building. Now it's the uh, Exxon Mobil Building, I think, on 1111 Bagby. Okay, um, we want uh, one of those people to raise their hand. You? Okay, let's go.